Well, hello to each of you. I'm hoping that you're doing well in every way possible. Welcome to another segment of Conversations in the Nick of Time. I am your host, Nikki Roach. Honored to be here to present to you some information about greatness, about success, about planning, about being intentional, all those different things that it takes to lead successfully. But we're talking about success as you define it. Those who are new to this platform, we bring industry thought leaders and influencers from across all different all different industries to help you with leadership excellence, accidents, as well as equity. So all those different things bundled in one would give you the opportunity to have some insight from individuals you may not necessarily cross paths with or even be aware that they have a stance in the world, not just in your your respected place, but in the world, influencing a number of different things to help us leverage where we are, but also where we're going. This Conversations in the Nick of Time is the destination for mentoring moments with a global influence. And we are excited about all that we give you, all that we do, and even the the things and lessons we learn um, as uh, the crew behind producing this segment and this platform as a whole. Excited, beyond excited um, to introduce you to uh, a new friend, I will call her, um, out of Argentina. Yes, Argentina, Miss Julia Rock. And she is an absolute amazing individual who in fact rocks, like seriously, because the work that she is doing right now to help individuals, specifically athletes, and that's um, those within the college space, within the professional space of athletics um, across all sports, um, understanding that they don't have to get stuck or plateau within one space, but she's helping these individuals move from players to professionals, landing six-figure opportunities, um, helping them to develop their speaking, helping them to develop their gravitas, their presence off the field so that life, again, can continue, but also afford them some new areas of success. And so she's here She is the founder of Rock Career Development, where she provides career and leadership development. She's helped thousands of ambitious Black as well as persons of color break through career plateaus to secure six-figure and fulfilling opportunities off the field. She is a certified professional resume writer and a certified employment interview professional. Have you heard of such? I'm shocked because I even wanted to know some of these questions that she'll get to in just a moment. Through her company, Book um, Rock Career Development, she now helps Black and persons of color, former and training athletes, translate their existing skills into high-paying and in-demand careers. She has signature coaching method. She just recently released a book, and I can go on and on and on, but... Ladies and gentlemen, I want to present to some and introduce to others, Miss Julia C. Rock. How are you? I'm doing well, Nikki. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me today. Yes, it is an honor to have you here. Thank you so much. I know the time difference is a little different, but we've made time. And yes. I understand that, you know, there may be some background um, um, inviting music, which by the <laughs> <laughs> this sounds... Um, because of the time difference, but we are just happy to have you here and we will work through all of that. Thank you so much. I like the way that you put it, that some background tunes. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit like how in the world, because I understand also you have a career in accounting and yes. there are um, a number of us who number of us meaning women, especially women of color over the past couple of years who have transitioned out of um, our nine to fives and um, into our own companies, sole proprietorship, entrepreneurship, um, some collaborative opportunities. But you have made the decision to stay with your organization, to work a nine to five, so to speak, as well as put all this effort and um and 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 yield success from your rock 
career development firm. And that is not easy. <laughs> what what made you first decide I'm going to do both? Uh, because for me, when it comes to the kind of the balance between the two, or do you have to pick one or the other? I'm a firm believer that your your day job can fund your business before oh. you get into, you know, whether you're getting investments or you have other people coming in. When you have something to fund your business that you don't have to be <clears throat> beholden to someone else, it makes life easier. You can make better decisions for your business. And then for me to continue doing it, it's, it's because I enjoy the work that I do from 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 nine to five. Right. So so um, my background, my undergraduate degree is in finance and then my graduate degree is in accounting. And so I actually like what I do. And I actually like being a leader and running a large organization. So, you know, part of the reason I kept is like, I like what I do. And there's no and there's no need. I, I don't have to leave. And then what I have found is that when I made the pivot from coaching professionals to coaching athletes, and I decided to take a step back. I was able to do so in a thoughtful, peaceful way because I wasn't worried about where is the money going to come from? What's going to happen without sales? What kind of desperation decisions do I need to make? It's like, hey, I can be thoughtful because I have a steady stream of income and I can make the right decisions that I need to instead of just doing something because, hey, I've got to pay all the bills. And so so for those reasons, I, I, I found that keeping both has has been best for me. Yeah, and I'm glad you bring that up because there was this angst, I would say, right before COVID that, you know, and, and then once COVID hit, it was 2020. So we were, you know, I can see clearly now with the 2020 vision um, and we were leaving. So African-American women were number one in launching LLCs and companies and we were like leaving and I, at one season of life, did that very exact thing. I left, went on sabbatical for two years. But that time, I it was planned. It wasn't just, I'm like, stop just leaving these jobs. You got to have a plan. Yes. So I, I planned, I had, you know, paid off debt. I paid for some, some travel that I had been dreaming about and took advantage of that time. But I also took the time to stand up a consulting firm and to get my feet wet without having the distraction of having to decide what my schedule would be like because of the nine to five, which was demanding. It did not lead, lead, give me leeway to have something else in my life. And so once I made that tr transition, I ended up handling my business, but it took me longer to get started, to be honest, only because when you don't have that level of accountability that I was used to, it was very, very interesting to kind of keep the momentum going. And then I had to figure out, so my thing is even, so now I'm back, you know, working in the, in the, in the nine to five, so to speak, um, in a very demanding role, but it, it is in alignment. And I'm like, that's the kind of the difference. It's in alignment with this work, this platform, the speaking engagements, all of that. Um, but it but it also, I don't have the heavy burden of trying to juggle all the different things because of that alignment. Right, right. And and I think that the alignment piece is so important. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of kind of narratives out there about, you know, if you're helping, if you don't have your own business, you're building someone else's dream and all of this other thing. And it's like, that doesn't, I don't subscribe to that, right? If if you're in a role that is in alignment and it's providing you with income to to fund your business, to provide for your family, allowing you to make sound decisions and you're building skills, whether or not somebody else's dream is being built is irrelevant. You're getting what you need for your own growth, for you to achieve your own goals and it's and it's keeping you where you want to be and in your zone of genius as, as you know as, as some of the folks would say. So, I feel like we've got to shift out of this narrative that I'm entrepreneurship is the only way and solo kind of just being an entrepreneur alone is is the only way because that for for some people that puts pressure on them to do things that they don't really need to do right mm -hmm. not everyone's built to be an entrepreneur by itself you know it takes a lot to run a business and not have a backup plan and you have to keep sales and you have to keep all these things going and so it's really important for people to find out what works for them what's in alignment for them and and, and not listen to to a a lot of the uh, talking points that are out there. Right. I know I, 
I coined the, the, the phrase a paid internship. And so my paid, my current nine to five is a paid internship, so to speak, because it teaches me how to be a better leader. It teaches me how to navigate um, um, issues and crisis management and all these different things that we talk about on this platform. I'm experiencing, you know, with someone else and then also having to learn how to have. um, So if it's project management, these different phases so that I can transfer those things over. And it is, um, as you said, shifting the narrative to understand it doesn't have to be an either or, but it can right. be both and, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I think that because entrepreneurship is painted in such a glitzy and glamorous way online, it, it's unlimited earning potential and you have all this freedom and and true, ultimately you get there. But for a lot of entrepreneurs who are starting out at the bottom, that unlimited earning potential, they just need to earn something, period. And all this freedom, you have to build that business to get to the point where it's running by itself and you have a staff of people to have all the freedom. And so I think there's a a false narrative that's painted about the end game of entrepreneurship for people that are now starting out. So it really doesn't have to be an either or. And then to your point, you're building so many skills that you can transfer later, right? Whether, like you said, project management, leadership, learning certain systems and programs that you can then implement in your business, conflict resolution, problem solving, all these things that you need to run your business, you are learn. You have a training ground in your day job. But, you know, but I, like I said, sometimes the narratives out there for people to sell books and templates, you know, <laughs> uh, causes the narrative to shift. It does. It does. And then I understand you have more than 60 people that you are leading from your current role, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. So, so about 60. Yep. So t- share with us how, because th- that's demanding. <laughs> it's oftentimes hard just to lead one, meaning self. <laughs> so how is it that you are navigating um, and what what's some of the, the transferable skills? Paint a picture for us that you roll into rock career development. Absolutely. So when you run a team that large, it's really important for you to be able to delegate so that you can spend time being strategic, right? Because with with that many people, there's always going to be something for you to get pulled into a call or something for you to make a decision, you know, somewhere you need help and so forth. So what I've learned to do is delegate because I have a team of managers that reports to me. So, uh, so I make sure that, hey, I'm able to delegate certain things to them for them to take care of so I can spend time on what's most important for my role. Uh, And so from a business perspective, it translates into, you know, what can I delegate to my assistant to make sure that, hey, I'm spending my time focusing on the efforts, you know, and if if I don't write resumes anymore, so how do I make sure that I'm gauging the right resume writer so I'm not taking on work that I don't want um, for, for, for revenue purposes or anything like that. So especially that delegation and that time management that I've had to use in my, in my day job with running a team that large, that, that ultimately also transitions into my business. Yeah. Now, what would you say has been the toughest lesson for you to learn? Because we're not talking about you're just going to clock in and um, and, and not saying this to be funny, but you're not just going to clock in to a, a, a nine to five where you're not using your skill set. No, you're leading 60 plus people and you're not all you're not all in the same state. Correct. Or, or country. So when you have that going on. That takes that's a lot that you're giving someone could say on that side. And then you come over on this side and this is you're, you're pouring into other people in a whole different way. That's, that is very, very demanding on both sides. How are you managing the um, commitment that you have raised your hand for having serving in these two areas? Uh, So in terms of managing, the biggest thing for me has been around self-care If you are not uh, caring for yourself, it is hard to do these things, right? So instead of talking about this system or this program, or I I really want to talk about the fact that self-care is the underpinning of you being able to manage this kind of demand on your life, whether it's taking time for devotion and prayer in the morning, whether it's exercise, you know, whether it's journaling, I use that as a way to help me manage because otherwise my anxiety would be through the roof. I'd be stressed out. I wouldn't be sleeping. And so taking 
that time and saying, where is the separation? Where do I leave work? Where do I leave my business? And what's the time that I have for me? And that's really been essential for me to be able to manage between those two things. What, how are you navigating guilt though? Because yes, self-care is great. And, and it's a thing that we say now, but to actually initiate it and to settle down, um, there's guilt that comes with that. How are you navigating that? So when it comes to the guilt, because it, it's been a process, because when I was first um, getting into continuing to, to manage both, I was just like, ah, you know, am I shortchanging one side or am I shortchanging the other? But then I had to remember that I'm multifaceted. And if I'm giving the best that I believe I can give, then that's what's most important. So if I'm going to my job and I'm giving the best to my team, and I can be confident that that's what I've done. And then when I come to my business, hey, I'm giving the best, but I'm delegating where I need to be. That's how I'm na navigating the guilt is where am I giving my best? And I'm I'm also making sure that I don't feel guilt because I'm trying to be a perfectionist, right? Because part of running your business <laughs> is that you're trying to get everything perfect. And the same thing with running with 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 running a team is that you have to be perfect on all fronts. Perfectionism is is a myth, right? That's not something that's attainable. And so giving myself some grace to know that hey, mistakes are going to happen. Um, you're not going to be perfect, but that's okay. That's part of your growth. That's part of your learning. That has also helped me to navigate some of that guilt as well as just get out of the perfectionism. You can't, you know, achieve success if, if perfection is what you're chasing. You've got to let some of that go. Yeah. Now your, your, your strategy for letting go when it comes to the demand of your um, work and not necessarily on your nine to five, but in your rock career development firm, understanding that it's your baby. It's your vision. And you know how we can get. We want to hold on to every part of the operations, but understanding it can't grow if we don't let some of it go. That's right. How how have you positioned yourself? Um, and what's so funny is I have these words that come to me um, as I'm researching each of uh, the guests. And for you, the word position resonated with me and in, in position a place where someone or something is located or has been put a particular way in which someone or something is placed or arranged so how are you positioning yourself um to let some of it go to release some of it because you cannot do all this by yourself yeah and and I'll be honest part of what helped me to position was getting a coach um For your, so wait 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 wait, wait. You're, you are a coach, but you got a coach. I sure did. I sure did. Um, a, a, a few okay. years ago, I got a coach to help me from a business perspective because that was a hurdle that I was get that I had gotten to. Um, and I realized it's like, okay, I do probably need to, to let some of this go, but the coach was able to really help me to think about how to let go and let go effectively and not feel guilty about letting go, not feeling guilty about spending the money on getting help or, or, or outsourcing some of the work. Um, so, so that's one of the big things I tell people get help. Help, whether it's a coach, whether it's a whatever, you can't do all things. You don't have to be superwoman. You don't have to be a one-stop shop that, you know, that's something that will keep us perpetually burnt out with nothing left for ourselves or our families. And so getting the coach really helped me to think about what can you let go, which would still allow you to do what you are good at and what you enjoy doing in your, in your business. And so for me, a lot of it was the administrative task of trying to keep up with all the clients and the emails and the so on, you know, trying to do that and still serve the clients that had got to be too much for me. And so being able to let that go and say, okay, so now I can spend more time on my craft and helping others and learning more at, and, and adapting to the changing trends. Um, but yeah, it, it started with getting some help, doing that introspection and then getting the help from the coach. Oh my gosh. So, I, I mean, the, there's like nervousness, you know how this is when we are like, this is our baby. Can this person do and produce and streamline um, and deliver to my level of expectation? I think that comes down to communication um, and, and honest communication. Because, But the handoff, oh, do you know how <laughs> nervous? <laughs> like, because it, it is 
Yes, because now you are tapping into someone having to also be closer because a lot of times we do try to guard what that vision is to make sure that we're producing. But I've learned and continuing to learn there is nothing new under the sun. It's just our fingerprint that kind of changes the dynamics of certain things and our lived experience. But having someone around to delegate to, it, it does matter. I know even for myself, I had reached a point last, you know, in the, in the previous year that I had gotten as far as I could by myself, but I was still trying to navigate it. But I, like you, did not want to leave my nine to five. I, I, I really, really like my nine to five. And until something comes along to where it's like, okay, it is time to end because I cannot pull this off, then I'll, sh- I'll, I'll pivot, I'll shift. But in that, I realized I'm not letting this go. But yet I have all these things going on that's blossoming with the media side of things. You can't do all of this. But it it wasn't even that I had to seek out because this comes down to the relationships. And I I will pivot right into that. Having Mm -hmm. the right relationships around and telling the right people um, just a little bit about where where things are going, where you're trying to jump some hurdles, where there are some barriers, where there's some opportunities, all those different things. And the, the help came. Like, That's but beautiful. it was hard for me to accept the help. This is why I'm talking about that. So how is That's it that amazing. you have brought in individuals to help assist you in this dream and the the expansion of rock. So so that's the thing. We have to be willing to accept the help, which is what you just mentioned, right? Cuz because even with bring when I brought my assistant in to help me, I was still like uh how much do I give her? And and it it was a mental process, but then I had to remember the only way for me to grow and to achieve the vision for rock career development. I, you know, I have to let this go. I, she came to me with a certain skill set that, that I was looking for. So it's like, okay, if she has a skill set that you were specifically looking for, why are you not letting her use her skill set? You've got a skill set over here that you should be putting to work, but you're still trying to do this stuff over here that someone else is more skilled in. Um, and the same thing happened when I, you know, when I had the team of uh, resume writers, um, you know, initially I was just like, well, what if they don't write the resumes as well as I would like, but then, you know, the, the way that I thought about it is Nike, they produce apparel, they produce shoes. Yeah, I'm a big sneakerhead, so I use a lot of Nike references. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you know, they produce shoes and, and apparel. And if they have one bad sneaker, they or 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 a t-shirt, they don't shut down the entire business, right? It's like, yeah. you know, it, bad things can happen, mistakes can happen, you know, they apologize to the customer and move on. And so e- even though I take pride in what I do and take pride in what I offer to clients, if something happens, I have to be willing to say, Hey, things can happen in, in, in as part of scaling, you've got to be willing to accept some level of risk. If you want to hold on to everything so it's perfect, that yeah. limits and stunts your growth. So, um, so that's, that's another way that I was able to kind of work around that resistance and reluctance to getting help. So do you think that it comes to a point where good is good enough instead of just seeking and pursuing this, uh, space of excellence and perfection? I, and I think that there's a difference between excellence and perfection as well, mm-hmm. right? Because perfectionism is this ungettable get where it's flawless. There's never an issue. You can still be excellent and, yeah. and make a mistake. Yeah. You can still be excellent and stumble. And so that's what I had to tell myself that just because I have a stumble or a misstep, that doesn't mean that I'm no longer at an excellent performing level. And I think how we talk to ourselves and how we look at ourselves in the mirror is so important because as soon as we make any mistake at all we drop ourselves and say man i'm barely making it i'm on this i'm struggling yeah. i'm i'm just good i'm not even what i'm supposed to be and we have all this imposter syndrome but you can still be excellent and still be killing it and have stumbles from time to time because we're human beings we're not machines we're not robots we're not superheroes we're human beings yeah what do you wish you had known even a year ago that you know now 
actually that I'm more creative than I than I've thought. And I know that sounds kind of like something different. You would be yeah. expecting some piece of advice, but it's like that I'm more creative than I thought. One of the ways that I was always talking to myself was because I have a finance and accounting brain is that, hey, I'm facts and figures, numbers, numbers, numbers. But as I've gone through some growth and I've gone through some additional coaching this year, I realized I have the power to be more creative and more vulnerable in what I do than I had ever thought possible. And that's a powerful uh, nugget for me because I'm like, that's that can amplify the work that I do times 10. Mm -hmm. And so I wish I had tapped into that creativity a year ago, but how we speak to ourselves and how we think about ourselves makes a huge difference in our output. Right. And I'm happy you brought that up because often we can find ourselves in this comparing comparison space because many of us are birthing ideas, are birthing companies, are birthing um, partnerships and collaborations. And so you can get to the point to where it's like, oh my gosh, no matter where you are in the world, because you're in a whole different part of the world than I than I am, but it's like, oh my gosh, here's another person. And and I'm just going to, you know, we deal with truth on here, on this platform. Here's another person doing career development. Here's another person doing, um, helping people transition. But there, the, but as I always say, one, the world is our playground and there's not enough of us to even satisfy the need in the world. But then we all bring our own different thing. And I think our lived experiences impact how we deliver and how we show up in this space of excellence. So with all of that, how do you stay centered to understand that rock career development is um, making just as much noise as as a John Maxwell, you know, you know, when you put it out there like that, like we, we on our way, like <laughs> we got this, what keeps you centered and grounded around that? That this is my God given purpose. Yeah. All right. So, so it doesn't matter that someone else el else out here is getting it and they're making noise and they're, I've seen the impact that my work has had on people's lives. I hear how God continues to direct me and how he, helps me to minister to people through my business. That's the way that, yeah. I, you know, people have ministries of preaching and stuff. That's not my lane, yeah. but my ministry is to help people um, to live their best professional lives and achieve their potential from a career perspective. And so it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. Nobody is me. <laughs> I'm like, nobody is me. No one has what I have, what I have. No one can do what I do. No one can say it the way I can say it. And it's also because God continues to bless me and put the right words in my mouth that can resonate with someone differently than what someone else in the street may be saying. Yeah. And then you 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 pivoted a couple of times to where you have now niched all the way down and you have identified a specific population in which you are serving. How did that come about? Yeah, so it's it's interesting because um, I had been coaching professionals for a long time, um, you know, officially since 2013, and then in 2021, I was I was still coaching professionals, and one of my clients, her brother, uh, was a was a basketball player overseas, um, and then he was going to be returning home and was going to need a new career opportunity, and so she reached out to me and said, "Hey, I know that this may not be your lane, but would you be willing to help my brother uh, through the career process so that he could find a new opportunity?" I said, "Well, I've never coached athletes before, but we're going to give it a go, right? I like sports; it kind of works well," mm -hmm. um, and. And so he and I worked together, you know, because someone who's coming from overseas playing and someone who's played basketball their whole lives, they haven't really had to do resumes, interview prep, salary negotiation, none of that. And so we were able to work through all of that together and, and he got an opportunity. And so I was excited for him, but then I had to think, okay, he can't be the only athlete who is in need of this service, right? Because if everyone's been playing sports their whole lives, who's been nurturing that other side of them so that when they're ready to exit their sport, uh, that they have have a fallback plan that they can go and pursue a career opportunity because not everybody has gazillion dollar endorsements that they can live on for the rest of their lives, right? So for the people who have to earn an income now, what is the opportunity for them? And so that's really how I got into that was seeing a need in the marketplace uh, and, and wanting to fill that need. 
I love it because I mean, and going back to the word positioned, um, a, a place where someone or something is located or has been put. So you have literally like there is this niche audience, this niche group who will need at some point um, help and assistance to transition and be positioned in their next, their second act. And it's it's very much a, a lesson I'm hoping that individuals are hearing as you're talking, you identify an opportunity. It wasn't just necessarily something that you, your company started out as. It was more broad initially, but then you were able to niche it down. And I think we can sometimes get hung up on having all the answers and all the pieces in place and all the people in place initially when we start a company, but, you know, piggybacking off of you, what do they say? Just do it. Right. <laughs> and you do have to just do it. And then you find your rhythm, you find your place, and then you get to plug in, right. To meet the need. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, when I think about business, I, I think of the analogy that, you know, you are not a tree, you can move, right? So, so you can start <laughs> out doing one thing. You can start out with your business being broad. You can start out in one industry, but as you learn more, as you grow, as you, as you yourself find different alignment, you can go ahead and shift and find the niche that you can best serve and that needs what you have. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and if after a while you're like, Hey, you know what? This doesn't feel the same. It's not bringing me joy. I don't feel like I'm reaching the clients the way that I want to. You can take a step back. You can pivot and do something else. And so I, you know, I want folks to get out of the habit of being beholden to something just because yeah. they've been doing it, you know, because that'll keep you in a business or in a job or in a, or a situation in life that you, that no longer serves you and you're no longer serving as well. Um, and so, so you're not a tree. You can move yeah. <laughs> whenever you're ready. You can move. Oh my God, this is such rich conversation. Um, those who are just tuning in, you are listening to Conversations in the Nick of Time, the platform where we talk about leadership excellence, accidents, and equity. Our guest today, Ms. Julia C. Rock, um, joining us from Argentina, talking about her transition in regards to putting people in position through her company, Rock Career Development, her firm. And she is absolutely on point with these tips. And I know that you're getting some information that you needed in the nick of time. So it's amazing how many of us go through life with the thing and meaning the thing, meaning that career choice that we had in mind. Long gone are the days where you have to just pick one. And Julia C. Rock has demonstrated the fact that some of us at some point in our career, we will transition, but we may find ourselves stuck. So she's been talking about ways to get unstuck, but then also this whole idea that we don't have to shift from being an employee with a nine to five, so to speak, but also it could be both and because you can launch your own business as well as get something that is a dream of yours off the ground. Both and, not either or. That was just revolutionary to me because at one point of time, that was a decision that I had to make and I decided to go back so that I can get unstuck to feed both of these pieces of me, which is the, the analytical part, but then also the creative part of me. So then what goes after that is this whole concept of zone of genius to uh, make sure you're in alignment. So you're not just doing things off the whim, but all that you're doing is coming in alignment so that you can fulfill what it is that you desire career wise. But also there's career and then there's call. That's kind of how I tee it up for myself. And then when you have this career and this call in alignment, that paid internship is what that nine to five turns into. So it's obviously so many things that we can come into when it's talking about this whole idea 
of uh, positioning ourselves for the things that can generate wealth and generate income, but also those things that can bring us to a space of significance, which is to land in a spot that we call to do that makes our heart beat fast. So here we are, we're gonna move forward and learn a little bit more about some things that we can do to better prepare. There's a number of articles, those who Google Julia C. Rock, that you will find with amazing useful uh, tips and strategies, as well as a new book that has come out, which we'll talk about in, in just a moment. But I want to go ahead and shift us into this space um, where we give some mentoring moments, some additional mentoring moments in the nick of time. There's an article in um, that was on Forbes.com um, this year, and um, it says, hit the mid-career plateau. 10 Ways to Get Unstuck. And this is by Caroline Siniza Levine, and she's a senior contributor to Forbes. And just a few of the things that they mention, clarify what you want next. Identify your gaps. Enroll your manager's support. Get company support. Tap your broader network. Go back to school or some level of professional development, develop your leadership skills, develop your negotiation skills, start a side gig or get another job. So those are the high level items that they li listed um, to get unstuck. Which one of those resonates with you? Uh, can I pick two? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So so one would be clarify what you want next. A lot of the work that I do is helping people to gain that clarity. The reason why people amble along in their careers without firm direction or they find themselves getting stuck is because they never took the time to take a step back to say, what do I actually want? What do I enjoy doing? What does success look like for me? You know, they got a degree and they've stayed in that career field forever and ever, never looking back and they wonder why they feel unfulfilled or they, or they're struggling or they feel stuck. So first clarify what you want so that you can have an intentional direction with your with your job search. Uh, and then the second one is tapping into your broad uh, your broader network. Mm -hmm. um, you know in 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 the book uh, we'll talk about but but that's what I write about in my portion of the book is the power of networking and leveraging your network. I think you know yeah. people talk about you know wanting to do things on their own and want to grind it out and hustle and it's like that's a terrible idea. If you don't have to grind it out by yourself, if you don't have to, why do it? If there are people who are around in your support system and your network who can open up a door for you, a door that you may never have been able to get to on your own, you know, lean into that. There are people who in your network who want to help you. And so, you know, continuing to nurture those relationships, engage with people and, and be transparent and vulnerable with people. If you need a job, this is not the time to say, yeah, things are going really well. Life is great. This is not the time to say that. You can talk to people and say, hey, listen, I'm actually in a space of transition right now. I'm looking for a new opportunity. I know that you're in X, Y, Z field, and this is some place that I've been looking. Do you think you may be able to help me? Most people in your network, if they're trusted folks, will say, absolutely. Let me see who I can get you on the phone with. If I can get you a meeting, let me send an email, something. Tapping into your network, I mean, this is your network uh, can bring you more than any course, any template, any coach. Your network can bring you more than any of that. So tapping into your network is is really a cheat code. Yeah, I love the the clarity part because I think even as um, whether it's you transitioning from one employer to another employer, or from an employer to now my my um, entrepreneurial endeavors you know, that the mix, whatever the mix is, I found that clarity is that is like the barrier, the roadblock, to, the pothole to, to even moving forward. Absolutely. Even for myself, um, I had to understand like, what does success? And that's why I say live out success as you define it. Most of us can't even define what that is. Like, and I don't mean like names in lights, 
face plastered on billboards. No, what does a, a day of success, a victory look like? And get granular with it. Because Absolutely. we can still get stuck in this hype, you know, this this hype. And, you know, we won't even get into that's why I tell people limit your time on social media <laughs> because Ugh. you can get so lost. You can get so lost because we people are reporting what worked or but, but they don't share the behind the scene grind or the fact that you've been trying to get this client or this opportunity for the last two years. Yes, I have it today and I can celebrate that, but we don't share the, and we don't see that part. So this clarity is it, it's so, so important, you know, and especially for folks who may also be on the career side, um, you know, there's this six figure job. And if I get the six figure job, I'm I've made it. I'm a success. And and when you think about it, when you get at kind of a six figure position, you never know what the stress is that comes with that, the amount of work, the amount of time that may be taken away from you and your family. Yeah. And it's so, not nine to five. Exactly. It's like a, like a seven to eight a seven yeah. to 10. I mean, and so there's, so, you know, there's this narrative around how much money you make that brings you success or, or like you said, from an entrepreneurship perspective, that your name is in lights and you're in Forbes or entrepreneur, whatever the case is, but no one knows what you're going through behind the scenes and what it took for you to get there. The sleepless nights, the, the overeating or under eating, the, the missing time with your family the house and, falling apart. and the house falling apart, right? And and, and so even for su successful entrepreneurs, many of them will tell you about the sacrifices that they've had to make. And many of them have said if they could do it all over again, they may have made a different choice, right? And so you've got to take the time to think about what does success look like to me? What are my values? What is important to me um, that if this was all taken away that I would still want to have, right? Because the thing, because once your business goes away, if all your money goes out of the bank, who are you? What do you have? Right. And, and too often we don't think about that because we attach ourselves to our careers and our business and we forget about what's truly important. And I will say for, for, for myself, being in Argentina has allowed me to do that because this is not a, you know, where I am, it's not a city of hustle and bustle and, you know, go, go, go. People spend time with their families. They're out in the park. They're Priority. eating dinner together. Priority. The priorities are completely different. Yep. And so that for me as a business owner and as a, as a, as a career professional and as a leader, it's helped me to shape my thoughts differently about, well, what does success look like to me? Where do I want to be? It's completely shifted the narrative from when I was living in, in the U S. Right. Next one you mentioned was network and tapping mm -hmm. into your network. And like I said earlier, when it came time for me to share, even myself, some different needs that I had, I didn't have to look because it was in my network, like my immediate network. And I didn't realize there was that level of um, skill set within my my immediate network, like close knit network until I spoke up. So I'm all about also speaking up to the right persons. Um, but in this network, we have made it such a naughty word and it's you know <laughs> such an uncomfortable thing. Um, on a previous show, Russ Finkelstein, he, he, he walked us through this whole idea of what it is and what it's not. And it doesn't have to be transactional. Um, right. But, but tell us just a little bit about networking because you are from an, from a global perspective and the importance of that. Absolutely. The the idea about networking is building genuine connections and relationships, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so the reason why that's important is you never know what room you're going to need to be in and when and who has access to that, right? So even if you're not doing a business deal or this person's not directly in your department, the person doesn't even live in the same country, it's important for you to nurture them, especially if you find some level of alignment that for you to nurture those relationships because you never know when it's gonna come back to, to help you. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. Back in 2020, I was, on a, um, I was on a show for, I guess it was Entrepreneur, and I was able to uh, network with an individual who was on, who was 
was part of the same panel I was on. That was 2020. And we continued to stay in contact and catch up from time to time. Fast forward to 2022, he was able to open the door for me to get a speaking engagement, uh, you know, in New York. And had I not had that connection from years ago and continue to maintain that connection, nice, nice, nice. you know, I would not have had the opportunity. So it's really important that we don't just enter with what can this person do for me today? Because no one likes feeling used. You don't like feeling used. So why, why do that to someone else? But building those genuine relationships, seeing where there's actual synergies and rapport that you can build, um, that is, that is so important so that when the time comes, you don't have to ask. That's the thing. If you build relationships correctly, if someone sees an opportunity for you, they're going to send it to you. You don't have to say, Hey, can you do this for me? They, they may actually say, Oh, I actually saw this for you. Uh, let me send this your way. Or I, I put in a good word for you with so-and-so here's something to follow up on without you having to put in any effort. That's mm-hmm. the truth behind, you know, building and nurturing relationships. Wonderful. And then when you say nurture for you and your where you sit, what is a, what is one strategy of nurturing look like? Uh, so uh, I love, um, I personally love like the intermittent check-ins, like the, you know, let's set up 15 exactly. minutes. Oh, I haven't spoken to you in a minute. Let's catch up. Oh, I just saw that your book came out. You know, I'd love to hear more about that. Or I saw that you changed your business. Let's talk about that. Um, or I'm going to be in your city, you know, uh, if you have 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So I love the intermittent check-ins because I think emails and texts and things are important, but showing that you're willing to invest time with people and it doesn't have to be long, 10, 15 minutes of catch up, letting them know that you're invested in the relationship that goes a long way. So that's a big strategy for me. Find 10 or 15 minutes on the calendar just to see how someone's doing. Yeah, that's that's a great point. I know I have even on my Google calendar, it it pops up every month and there's a like a list of names and I don't always stick to those names, but I'm reminded to do just check ins. Exactly. Um, with Reach out. Mm-hmm. And it, it just says, you know, and, and like I said, some of the names may change from time to time, but it's a reminder for me to press pause and, and check in with some others. Now, you are a certified resume writer and yes. um, you help in that space. Top three things that we need to consider when we are be- before we submit a resume. The first thing that I would say is making sure that your resume is clear as to what you're going after. One of the biggest mistakes I see with resumes is the fact that someone's put a resume together and after reading it, I'm not really clear on what kind of job they're going after. It's like, okay, are you going to be a sales rep, entrepreneur, project manager, janitor, right? And so it's like, you know, really being clear on what you're going after and what your skill set is. The second thing is, Uh, making sure that you're not filling it with fluff and that it's extremely long. No one's saying you have to have a one page resume anymore, but I've seen three and four page resumes that could have probably been one page, one and a half, two max. So making sure that you're shortening and and keeping what's really critical. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the last thing I would mention is making sure that you understand the so what of your accomplishments. People love to pad and have a ton of accomplishments or, or that I did this or I did that, but what does that translate into for the business? So let's say you saved, you know, 35 you know, thousand dollars or million, thirty five million dollars, but then okay, that's great. But what does that now do? Or you know, if you save time doing something, what does that now do? So thinking about the so what behind uh, behind the you know your your accomplishments that you place on your resume. So uh, so like I said, being clear on what you're going after, uh, making sure that the length is appropriate because people are you know the recruiters and hiring managers are only going to spend a few seconds looking at it, and then ultimately thinking about the so what behind all of your accomplishments to make sure it res- resonates with the recruiters. Oh, great! The, I mean, the whole so what part of it to me is like very, very, very much something that we have to be mindful of and consider at all times because there are resumes coming from everywhere. And mm-hmm. when we, that's what we, you know, we focus, we leaned back to focus a little more on global opportunities and a global presence because people are, the people are moving. They're taking risks. They are, they are like, sign me up. You know, where is it? Okay. I can't, can't, can't even find that on the map, but, but Hey, I'm going to apply. 
And because it's also remote opportunities now. Absolutely. Like never before. And standing out from the crowd can land in that so what. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and that's that's what um, when I was uh, writing resumes more actively, that's what I would talk to, to my clients about as to why I was structuring their bullet points certain ways or why I was asking them certain questions. Because you have to think someone in the U.S. may understand that if you say I save this much, it may resonate with some resonate with somebody who's in your same industry or in the same country. But when you think globally, yeah. you've got to really let people know in Europe or in Africa, why does this matter? What is the context? Because then it's like, oh, snap, wait, well, this is actually a really big deal, right? right? But if you're only just painting it in a certain way, it only can resonate with probably a smaller, much more limited audience. So that so what is really what can draw that distinction so that no matter who's picking up your resume, they know why this matters and why they want to have a follow-up conversation with you or potentially interview you. What do you think about cover letters these days? So uh, I hate cover letters. I hate them, but, 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 (laughs) but um, they're essential. They're essential. Um, The reason is because Cover letters allow you to articulate why you want this opportunity and And why it's a fit. Yeah. And And you're so so what, right? Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. And so with the resume, it's a static document that's that's hi- that's giving the highlights. Right. But your cover letter is really helping to provide the additional sale as to why you are the right candidate for this opportunity and why you want to work there. I mean, think about just just to give you a quick analogy, think about dating. Right. If somebody sounds like they're saying the same thing to everybody. Right. That it's like, well, I'm not special. Well, you don't really want me for real. So, so you're less likely to get a second date out of that. Right. But if, but you're, but if you're able to articulate why you want this person, it's like, Oh, okay. Well, maybe there's something here. The same thing goes with a cover letter. Companies know that you're applying elsewhere, but they want to know what is it about them that makes you want to, to work at their organization, not just what you bring to the table, but why them, the yeah. cover letter serves as the, as the critical place to share that information. Right. Okay. Great. Because I know there's t- all kind of taboo around this cover letter and and the, uh, the the dissolvement of the cover letter, but it does allow you to anchor and hunker down to be a little more um, intentional behind your 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 idea of positioning. Tell us a little bit about the book. Yes. Yes. So so I'm a co-author on the book, The Six Figure Athlete. Uh, I'm really excited. I was released uh, back in December and. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, the other authors and myself, the the focus of the book is really helping athletes to translate their skills into cash. So what skills do you have or what skills can you use to then turn that into revenue generation for yourself? Whether it's that you want to get a new career opportunity or you want to launch your own business, uh, what skills can you leverage? And my particular skill that I talk about is networking. And so that's why I was super passionate about the networking thing, yeah. because I mean, it's something that I live by. Uh, and so I'm not going to spoil it, but it really just shares and outlines a number of ways that networking can help you to level up uh, and really begin to to bring in that income for yourself. So uh, hopefully folks will check out the book. It's at uh, rockcareer.com backslash SFA book. So um, hoping that folks enjoy it. And it is not just for athletes. No, not at all. Not at all. So, so um no matter where you are in life, these are skills that are talking about how high performers are able to take their skills and turn them into money. So whether you're a, a transitioning athlete or you're in your career and trying to figure out how do I use my skills to really level up my salary and level up my income, um, you can take all the strategies from this book. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit about Rock Career Development. And um, I know it, you have niched down for athletes. Um, whether they're um, college, professional, um, but there is there space for others? Yes. Yeah, so, so especially right now with folks who are in the, the transition uh, space with whether it comes to layoffs and so forth. So because my specialty is really around career transitions, I took some time to really think about where do I best fit in the career coaching space? And it's really around helping people in the career transition. So, so this year, seeing um, seeing the need for those who specifically are in that transition space. Uh, so I'm now taking on some professional clients to to help uh, kind of meet that that immediate need in the marketplace because I find that 
a lot of the skills are are the same when it comes, whether it's to athletes or for folks who are transitioning from one industry to another, you've got to leverage on very similar ideas and similar things in order to get that next opportunity. Yeah, I'm on your site. And um, so ready to apply to ball to boardroom. Yes. I love I love the play on the on the um the, the athlete athletic um language, but also you know your last name. Like thank you, God, right? <laughs> it totally set you up. But the fact that um this is a 60-day coaching program designed for pro and student basketball athletes to help them with their transition. What is so interesting there is so many transferable. Um, analogies and strategies around just sports, whether you're into sports or not, that the average person can adapt and learn. Because me, I'm, I'm, I I ran track, but I'm not like a, an athlete necessarily, but I'm into sports, but I'm able to visualize some of those things in which happen on the court and, and the, the intentionality of positioning and knowing what position you play to, to make the success happen. And to me, I'm just fascinated. Um, and I applaud you for, you know, and, and thank you, God, for the vision that he's giving you because it is very, very, um, it's, it's less intimidating because this whole idea of transition, the, the, I'm my age group and those who I'm around, a lot of them are, um, going into this whole idea of um, their second act and what happens right. next. And so with that, it is just very, very interesting how we're showing up and the language we're using, the tools that we're tapping into, all of that is like, wow. Tell us where we can find you and learn more. Absolutely. So you can visit my website, which is www.rockcareer.com. Rockcareer.com. Uh, <laughs> um, and then if you want to follow me personally uh, and see some of my tips, you can follow me at the Julia Rock on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And then if you want to follow my business, it's at Rock Career on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I know something's been said. Um, and you've been able to glean from the expertise of Miss Julia to position yourself for your next. Thanks to each of our sponsors. We love you. We appreciate you so much. And thank you for believing in this platform. The more. I want to thank you as well for your continued support. Now go and be great. Give time and take time.